Okay, for the fifth time. Time to start on the atrium. At least that's the word I'm using to call this. It's kind of like a sunroom, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. The point of this little area, although the design has changed a little bit from the initial design, still more or less will function as it ended originally. The purpose was to capture sunlight and to have this slab, which is a giant slab. It's actually uh, insulated down about four feet and it's got uh, CDF fill which is like a really, really weak concrete fill. And then it's got a 10 inch slab on top of that. The 10 inch slab is colored all the way through. And there's, I actually ran some PEX through the bottom of it and insulated all the sides, except for this front one. And the idea is the sun can just beat down in here, beat down on this black cement. And the black cement should soak up that heat really well and the room and the glass will help trap that heat. And over time, this will you know, build up warmth throughout the summer season. And then through the winter, it should carry a little extra warmth, hopefully. It's kind of just an idea, just, just to see if it would work. But mainly the idea was also just to have a lot of glass here, and the sun rises, and it rotates all around through here in the winter. And as you can see, pretty much gets some sun all morning. Once it's fully sealed up, we'll see how much heat it's able to really trap. The idea is just to basically have like a free heated space that would help kind of warm the house indirectly and just be a cool entry point too. So that's the atrium. Now we gotta build. I've gotta get some doors. That's what's been the hold up here. Originally I wanted or I envisioned just storm doors. That would just be simple self-closing doors. Nothing fancy. Long story short, it's they're cheap. They're cheap quality. Uh, it's hard to get the double door kit for some reason in my area. I just I think it would be a bad choice overall compared to some other options. Our other options was initially when we bought all our doors and windows from Milgard, we could have ordered doors for this and the front doors from Milgard, but we wanted to get something custom for the front doors. And I was thinking storm doors for this. In any case, the, wind, the doors we would need for this, I'm not sure Milgard even makes normally, and we might have to get them custom anyways. Because what I would like here is like a, pretty much a very flat, minimal threshold and uh, nice wooden doors, some kind of, you know, it would be preferable maple or maybe alder. You know, they would just be French doors with full glass windows in them. We would prefer the doors to be able to swing either way. Uh, that would just be the least hindrance to the actual front door, and be the most pleasurable type of door to use. They make hinges that actually I think they're called cafe hinges and they swing both ways. They actually have like a hinge on each side kind of thing. And so they they allow the door to go each way but then return to center. I should say that that option <clears throat> at a local door shop, I'm guessing would probably be in the range between three to $5,000, just depending on, I guess, where you live. You know, that's a lot of money. Like for instance, the the other doors we got, if you can see through there, the double door, I think that was almost, it was like 2,500 to 3,000. And so we're planning on spending, you know, at least four to five on getting some really cool front doors. Ones that seal really nicely, because they're gonna get, it's gonna get the most use. I decided instead of paying, you know, four or five grand, it really shouldn't take me that long to build these doors. One of my first jobs was uh, building custom wood doors. And so I have made really nice expensive doors before, but it's been a really long time. And I don't have a super fancy wood shop. I mean, we had tools in there that cost 50 grand. You know, a sander that was $50,000. Like really nice feeders on table saws and, and huge presses. So I don't have those tools, but I have built them before. I've already bought the maple. I figured how much maple I would need to make the two double doors and the jam. And I bought a little extra and it was a little over $500.
I bought some hinges just to see if they would be quality enough. And they seem like they'll work, and so I'm gonna order some more of those. And so that'll be another about $120 in hinges. And then I figured I'll make the hardware, uh, the door handles, out of the maple. And I bought some, uh, some stain and some clear coat. But I think I'm just gonna clear coat it. I'm not gonna use the stain. I think, I think we're gonna let this cedar gray out, and let it get nice and silver. And so it should complement just a raw, natural maple really well. It would be around $100 or something like that. And of course, some silicone. And I've already got the threshold, which is right here. We'll see if it's wide enough. It's the biggest one I could find on Amazon. I might have gotten a little liberal with the distance I carried my waterproofing. Or maybe I can... I don't know. I might not use this. We'll see. Be nice if I can find like an eight inch wide one. This will end up being a video basically of how to build really nice hopefully really nice front doors that open in and out that are maple finish without any of the proper tools and so the tools i will be using are a table saw and a chop saw and just a cheap one at that and my little handheld routers i've got an idea of how i want to build the doors but i kind of should do some tests first to see if i can do it because i don't want to waste too much of that wood <laughs> it's not cheap that's all the more reason to get the sawmill that we want because we have tons of maple that grow here and tons of alder, and both of which would serve this purpose well. First step I'm gonna do is just take some measurements, figure out how wide of a jam I'm gonna make because I don't know if you can see this here, but this is gonna have a rain screen on it, like the trim here, you can see there's a, I don't know if you can see that, I'll have to show you. But there's a gap right here, air gap between all this uh, trim and the blue skin so that this trim can dry from the inside and the outside. But you can see that this is where I can breathe. It actually comes up behind there, sucks air in through these siding vents is what they're called. Horror vent. Anyways, so I'm gonna measure out the jam, try to figure out exactly how big a jam I need so that I can just nail my trim right to the maple. And I've got the hinges so I can see how they operate and exactly how much room they're going to need and what type of jam I'm going to make for them. It's not like a normal door. I have to make sure, you know, I leave at least half inch gap all the way around so that I can add my shim, well, quarter inch gap on, it, on the sides so that I have enough room to shim it. And once I got my doors basically roughed out and made, and, f and put together, that's when I'll be able to order the glass and get that going. The way the doors actually go together is instead of just being thick pieces of wood on each side, I'm actually gonna take two pieces of one by material and laminate them together. And I'll take a look at which way they're bending, which, which way they have a, a natural curve to them. And I'll try to glue them in a way that they hold each other straight. That's kind of the first step is determining, I think they're called, Rails. The rails are the, the long parts of the door and then the styles are the short parts. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. It doesn't really matter. What matters is you're taking two pieces of wood and you're laminating them together to get them to stay straight. So I basically need four styles. It'll be easier to do this. Four styles for two doors basically and then four <laughs> four rails and two styles each door. So four rails and four styles. And I've got to get those styles and rails to interlock really strongly so that they hold together forever and hold that glass really well. I'll laminate all these styles and rails as a first step, but the way I'm going to do it is going to complicate things. So I have to just show you in the shop. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how wide of a jam I'm gonna go here. Cause this side will get the same there. You can see it's 
gonna get the same treatment with these windows on the outside over there. It's basically like a half inch air gap. And then this is three quarter material. So you've got basically an inch and a quarter is where the outside of this would be. So if this jam went half inch past this, then the trim could land right on top of the maple. I haven't done the inside yet, so I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it. Am I gonna put a rain screen on this side? Probably not. Probably just put it right up against there. Nothing special, you know, just right up against the wood. So there's enough so I can breathe to as much as I can. I'll just make sure I run my jam far enough so that it's a little bit proud of this so that when I nail on my trim, it's a nice tight gap. So if I had six you know, half inch on that side, and a little bit on this side, a half inch is even better. And I'll just do six and five eighths. And it's barely like 71 and 5 eighths. And once that's taped, at least three quarters. Pretty close. I don't know an eighth because it's wrapped. Probably about an eighth off in that direction. I'm gonna check it this way. Again, that's it's probably an eighth off in that direction too. And in this corner. Alright, that's much better. And this one, the top is just slightly out. So it's kissing the back. Kissing back. Okay, so we're in the same plane there, so that sh should go in pretty well. Probably just 82. 82 and a quarter. I'll just do 82. Ow. Oh man. Every tape. Just destroy my poor tapes. This flashing, I just I ran it all the way through. Not really knowing exactly what I was gonna do here. I don't think it's the best idea to necessarily be walking on this. Hopefully I'll have enough maple that I could just make a maple threshold. I like wood better in the sense that aluminum thresholds, like the one I have, really transfer the cold in. And so if it's warmer in here, it might cause condensation up the wazoo on the threshold, which might, it could soak up into the, the wood. It might not be a problem at all. It might make it slippery. I don't know. If I can avoid it though by making just a wood one, and if maple's hard enough to last up, last over time, or at least if it's wood, I can easily replace it with, you know, more wood from the mill in the future. I wanted just a smooth transition like this, you know, just nice and level, nice and easy. But the doors, if you ever wanted to have a mat or anything here, you need the doors up at least, at least half an inch, three quarters of an inch is better. And if you have that big of a gap, it might cause this small room to lose too much heat too fast. Because these, the gaps in these windows or doors is gonna be the only uh, ventilation this room will have. With the exception of if it ever gets too hot, you can come in and open up that skylight straight above us. It's a powered skylight. But in general, most of the breathing for the framing in this room is going to happen through this door, through the cracks. And so it just, um, it has to be enough, but not too much, because too much and it'll just, it, it'll waste the heat that you're generating from the sun beating down. Just for functional sake, I think a thin threshold is going to be fine because you're going to have a threshold there anyways. And my dream of no thresholds is just, it'll, there'll be low thresholds, but not no thresholds. I have to be good enough.
ripped up some clamps. I got some pipes to go with it. Make sure they fit. I believe it fits. Something like that. There we go. Really should be wearing gloves. Where are my gloves? Well, there's a rag. I'm gonna wipe my hands off first. So I put galvanized coating into my gloves that keep the galvanized coating off my hands. That makes sense? Got the poison on my hands and I put them in the brand new gloves. And then the brand new gloves poison me every time I put them on. That's how it's supposed to work, right? Whatever. Nice and warm. Now these type of poisons can go into my bloodstream instead. Ooh. Okay, PVC or whatever, microfiber, whatever. Bring it on, cancer. You're tough, huh? I think you're tough. You're tough if you pull the wrong side. So I think each one of these was like 11 to $12. And then each one of these is like 20, 21. So these are like 30, 30 yard clamps. But they're so much stronger than these junky ones, but those are good for like light type stuff or if you just use a ton of them. That's why I got a ton of them. Okay, so the purpose of all these clamps is to glue up all those styles and rails I was talking about earlier. This is the maple that I got for the door. Doors. It's all one by or three quarter inch thick by five and a half inch wide, which begs the question of how I'm gonna make a jam seven and a half wide. Oh no, six and five eighths wide. I think a biscuit joiner might be in my future. These are the hinges. Like this gets screwed into the back of the door, and then this into the jam. And if the door opens this way, it opens like that. And if it opens this way, it opens like that. These are stainless steel. They're big, they're six inch. And they say that three on each side should be enough for 100, like 100 pound doors. So I think, Three on each side should be plenty. And they said that these are good for an inch and a half door. That looks about right. The door itself will be an inch and a half. And the styles and rails will be five and a half to start and they'll shrink down a little bit after sanding and joining and stuff. So if this is your jam, you can't just mount like, like that. You'd have a gap there. So it has to have some kind of material here sticking out to give it the clearance. And I think I'll just use, you know, I'll just cut down, basically make one by twos of the maple. Here's the jam, here's the one by two that I make. And then this now gets mounted straight onto that, like so. And then it's free to swing in either direction without hitting the jam. And what I'll do is on the back of the door, I'll probably just cut out slots for this to come in so that it's not, you know, a giant, that's gonna be about a, almost a half inch gap if I just had the, you know, if I just had a flat rail. But if I notch them in, say a quarter inch, that'll reduce this gap to about an eighth of an inch. Basically have an eighth of an inch all the way around and underneath and between. That's my ideal. An eighth or more. Eighth, one eighth to three sixteenths. Seventy nine and seven sixteenths. So we'll do the same thing for the width. And in this direction we have three quarters, three quarters, three quarters and three quarters right off the top. So there's three inches. Just call it half an inch. Spread amongst these three gaps. 
three and a half total subtracted from this number. So that looks like it's 68. And then we have two doors. So we just divide that by two. And we get 34 a piece. So our doors are 79 and 7 16 by 34 inches. There will be seasonal expansion throughout the year on this wood. I took the sealer around here somewhere. Ah. If anything can keep those doors uh, in good working order, that should be it. And because it's out, technically outside of the house, I don't feel too bad using something this hardcore. We'll see what you're, what you're made of, man of war. So anyway, we're even coming at this over time with wear. I'm sure moisture will get into the door and it'll kind of, it'll grow a little bit in the, you know, in the moisture months and dry out a little bit in drier months. I can always work on it and fix it if it ever had any issues, but I think if I go with this size, I think I'll be okay. So that's basically how I got to my dimensions for each door. I think what I need to do is find some scrap wood and try to build a joint like I'm thinking of doing. And then I'll show you. And you can tell me if I'm crazy or not. Well, I tried a bunch of different ways to kind of go through and make these cuts here. And the chop saw was the worst. And the table saw was a little better. And the router seems to have done the best job, but you can see it leaves a bit to be desired. So I was thinking about making a little surfacing jig, a quick little one, just a poor man surfacing jig. So we'll see how this goes. That's pretty nice, if I do say so myself. Can you see that? Is that better? Oh. I'll do it one more time. And I need to go like this. They should fit inside of here. Inside this ugly mortise that I've made. Ugly but informative. Real quick, all I did was I just made two parallel rails that were the same thickness. So obviously as I go side to side, it stays the same height off, off of this. I picked this scrap piece of material because it's nice and flat and smooth. As long as it's clean, it should get clamped down really flat. And I can clamp it in there and this just slides back and forth. And voila. All I did was basically make sure this wasn't too high to interfere with the router, but you want it thick enough so that it, it won't, you know, bend in this direction at all. You want it to stay level. Pretty simple jig. All right. There it is, a moderate success. I mean, it's not half bad for just figuring it out. Oh, it's pretty strong. Oh man, maybe I should have pulled this apart then started the video. Oh, it fit, that's pretty lucky. First try, like a glove. Uh.
Okay. There's the poor man's door joint. Mortise and tenon, poor man's mortise and tenon. I think it'll work. It seems pretty strong and once these are glued together and made out of maple, so that's the idea. These are the tricky part here, is the mortises. When I glue them up, they, they got to be lined up real nice or else they'll have, you know, have some ugliness. So this is the rail. So this will be the long pieces and these will be the short ones. And it'll just go together like so. I'll adjust it so that this lines up nice. It's pretty flush. That's the idea is to get it as flush as possible. Then I'll glue them up and once it's glued up then I can route out rabbit for the glass to sit in. It's not terrible. The samurai carpenter would not be proud. Yeah, I think that's a success. Time for a break.